perhaps the, the first time that I saw him playing around with something that nobody else was playing around with was when he was working on the Dynaxian car. In 1933, in the middle of the Depression, Bucky left Ann to go to Connecticut with his pockets full of investors' money. He believed his idea for a car could turn the economy around. Cars in 1932 looked like a Model A Ford and they were very inefficient and noisy and not the faintest hint of streamlining. And Bucky actually went so far as to hire an aerodynamicist and they really went to town and designed uh, the car to get good mileage. He rethought the whole thing, the, the suspension, the front wheel drive for stability, and it used a, a Ford V8 engine, a flathead V8 engine from the 33 Ford in a Ford, it, on a good day, it got it 16, 17 miles to gallon. And in his car, which was 21 feet long and would seat 11 people, it got 30 miles to the gallon at, at cruising hard. It only had three wheels. Bridgeport Post, July 1933. 3,000 spectators, including many prominent men in the speedboat and aviation world, witnessed the first test of a three-wheeled car. The Dynaxion, built on the streamlining principles of fast boats, shot along in its first trial with Buckminster Fuller, its inventor, at the wheel. The Dynaxion car was utterly radical in 1933. It was radical in its day, and it was so utterly radical visually that he was actually enjoined by the New York Police Department to not drive it in midtown Manhattan because it literally stopped traffic. He pulled up to Madison Square Garden in the thing, once and it caused a traffic jam that took seven hours to untangle. Here's the bullet auto with only three wheels. Watch her snap. Nineteen feet long, but look at it do ring around a rosy with this cop. Great stuff if he tries to hand out a ticket. Get him busy and say goodbye. And the thing I really do remember is that it could turn on a dime. And I've never seen a car that could turn that way, just right straight around. Bucky saved in his files the tickets that he got driving the car, and he was caught. Uh, they timed him between towns at like 110 miles an hour. It's unheard of speeds. Especially when he was showing off for celebrity friends, like Amelia Earhart. And he kept the speeding tickets proudly in his files. Some of them were pretty outrageous. It's a wonder he didn't go to jail. And of course, everybody stared at it. And if he parked anybody, there would be a crowd around it. It was an amazing machine, really. Bucky's amazing machine created a sensation at the Chicago World's Fair. And so did Bucky Fuller himself. My first glimpse of Fuller was in the 30s. And he was a very glamorous figure, and he loved to party. He thought he was a great womanizer. He was uh, very attractive to women, and he was charming to them, and they loved to talk to them. But uh, as, as a uh, romantic figure, uh, I suspect he was more of a mascot than a, a Romeo. He liked to dazzle people, and this, why not women, you know? He was a little bit of a con man in, a w in that way. He had the gift of charisma, and he used it. Bucky and his car dazzled everyone, from Walter Chrysler to Henry Ford. Would-be investors traveled all the way from Europe on the Graf Zeppelin to the Chicago World's Fair to test drive the car and talk about production. For a moment, Bucky was riding high. The investors landed and took their first ride in the Dymaxion car. They're traveling in this car. The steering wheel moves outside the track of the front two wheels at speed. Uh, another vehicle comes in between and the car rolls over. Someone dies. Uh, the two backers decide that they will have nothing further to do with the project. No one really knows what caused the crash, but Bucky was relieved when the coroner's investigation cleared the Dymaxion car. 
financially the vehicle was a disaster, the company was a disaster. It was put into receivership and uh, all the parts and tools and all the equipment were sold at a sheriff's sale in 1934. If, if it had been produced in quantity, cars today would be very drastically different than what they are. His 1933 car would still be considered extremely high performance uh, and ecologically acceptable even by today's standards. And I do remember thinking at the time, this is the car of the future. This is the way cars are going to be and won't it be wonderful and terrific. And I never saw the Dymaxian car again. Every time we make a experiment, you always learn more, you can't learn less. It's very extraordinary. The metaphysical, the know-how always increases. Exactly the opposite of what all the books there are depreciated all the time. We're trying to work back to mortgage to death and failure. Somebody said to you, anything man needs to, needs to do, he knows how to do, he can afford to do, and he better start doing it. Thank you. <laughs>